Hello, options traders and Facebook fans, and this is a mini trading tutorial from OptionsAtoZ.com, and today I want to talk about profit and loss diagrams. Profit and loss diagrams are these kind of strange, mysterious-looking graphs that you've undoubtedly seen in various books and websites, and they are critical for options traders because they tell us the nature of a strategy. Are we bullish? Are we bearish? How much can we make? How much can we lose? And there's no easier way to determine the nature of a strategy than by understanding profit and loss diagrams. First off, understand there are many different names that these go by. Sometimes you'll hear them called profit and loss graphs, risk graphs, risk profiles, risk curves, risk diagrams, all kinds of names. And I might even throw them in interchangeably throughout this video, but don't let that throw you. It's all the same concept. Now, the second point to understand is that there are two different profit and loss curves. There's what is called an expiration curve, and that is good only at expiration. And when I say expiration, I mean the final seconds of the option's life. That's the only time you should be looking at that graph for answers. The second curve is called the current curve, sometimes called today's curve. And it's exactly what you would think. It's going to give you the answers for today. Now, for this video, I'm focusing mostly on the expiration curve, but I will touch lightly on the current curve at the end. The best way to understand a profit and loss diagram is to construct one by hand. Now, don't worry, your broker's platform will do these for you automatically, and I'll show you some examples at the end. But to better understand them, it really helps to construct one by hand. So let's just pretend that we are going to purchase a $50 call for $4. And of course, that means $400 plus commissions. Well, we've got lots of questions. Are we bullish? Are we bearish? What are the maximum gains? What are my losses? What's the break even point? I got all kinds of questions. And the more complicated the strategy, the more complicated the answers can become. And this is where the graphs are going to help you immensely. So here's how we would answer this if we wanted to construct it by hand. We'll always start with a little table. Over in the left-hand column, I've got stock price or whatever the underlying happens to be. And because we're trying to figure out the profit and loss diagram for a $50 call, I want 50 right here to be my center strike. And from there, I'm going to explore what would happen if the stock price fell below 50 or if it rose above 50. I don't need every single stock price that could occur. I just need to see some stock prices below and above every single strike in question. Most people count in $5 increments. So that's how I came up with this stock price range between 40 and 60. The second column is the option we're trying to figure out and draw our graph for. So it's a $50 call. And all we're going to do for the expiration graph is to fill in the option values at expiration at these various stock prices. So for example, if the stock is 40 at expiration, this first row right here, what is the $50 call worth? Well, it's obviously worthless. Nobody's going to pay you anything for the right to pay 50 when the stock is trading for 40. So it expires worthless. If the stock is 45, call is worthless. Stock closes at 50 call is worthless. At 55, now the $50 call has $5 of intrinsic value. It has no time value or no extrinsic value. So it would trade for exactly $5. And if the stock reaches 60, that 50 call would be worth 10. The cost column is very easy to figure out. It's simply what you paid. So in this example, we paid $4. If you wanted to include commissions, you could certainly do so. It's not going to make a terribly big difference on your graph. So most people just look at the overall cost. But notice that your cost doesn't change with the stock price. Once we paid $4 for this option, that's never going to change. So that entire column is fours. The final column is the profit and loss. And all we're going to do is to take our revenues from selling that call to close it minus our cost. So if the stock is 40, I would close my option and receive zero. I paid four and I would end up with a $4 loss. If the stock closes at 45, again, I would have zero revenues minus $4 cost, leaves me with a $4 loss. Stock is 50, I have a $4 loss. Stock is 55, now look what happens. I'm going to receive $5 from selling that call, I paid four, now I have a $1 gain, $1 profit. If the stock is 60, the 50 call is worth 10, I can sell that for 10, I paid four, I'm going to have a $6 profit. Now to construct our graph, I need two columns. I need this first column of stock prices and I need this 
last column of profit and losses. The rest here in the middle is going to be ignored. We just needed that to figure out these columns. And what we're going to do is to plot the profit and losses against the various stock prices. So notice that I've got 40 to 60 on my stock price column. I've got three negative fours, a one and a six in the profit and loss. And let's go put these over onto a graph. Now here's our graph paper. And notice that I have stock prices here on the horizontal axis. There's our 40 to 60 that we had on the previous table. Notice that as we move in this direction, stock prices are increasing. And as we go in this direction, they are decreasing. On the vertical axis, we have profits and losses. As we go above zero, we are into profits. As we go below zero, we are heading into losses. Now to construct our graph, it's very easy. We're just going to work our way through the various stock prices and say, what is the resulting profit or loss from our option? So for example, let's say the stock is 40. Just trace a vertical line right there through 40. And we found out from the previous table that if the stock is 40 at expiration, we would lose $4. So I line up negative four and where those two lines cross, I'm just going to mark a little dot with my pencil right there. And I'm going to move over to 45 and do the same thing. Previous table said at 45, we also lost four. Put another dot right there. Stock climbs up to 50. What would happen at expiration? We still lost four. Put a dot right there. Look over at 55. What happened now? We ended up with a $1 profit. So right there between zero and two, and where those two lines cross, I'm going to put another dot and move over to 60. If the stock is 60 at expiration, we ended up with a $6 profit. So up here at positive six, where those two lines cross, I put a dot and I can do this for as many stock prices as I want. I could even use dollars and cents. It doesn't matter. Mathematically, everything has to fall on this line, which we're going to draw by simply connecting these dots. And once these dots are connected, what you're looking at is a profit and loss diagram for a $50 call purchased for four. This is what it looks like. This is how a call option behaves. So how do we read this graph? Well, it's very simple. We just work the process backwards. What I want you to train yourself to do is always ask, what if the stock is, and then pick a stock price. And let's say, what's going to happen to me with this position if the stock is 55 at expiration? Find 55. And now I need to trace a line up to the yellow curve. Always go meet that yellow curve and then look left. And that's telling me that if the stock is 55 at expiration, this strategy is going to put a $1 profit in my pocket. Make sure you understand that that is not a $1 option. We've already accounted for the options price. This is a $1 profit. That's why it's called a profit and loss diagram. That's all we're looking at here. What if the stock gets to 60? Find 60 and now trace a line up to the yellow line and look left. And the graph tells me that if the stock is 60 at expiration, I will make a $6 profit. What would happen if the stock fell to 45? Find 45. Now notice I have to work down to go meet that yellow curve. So I'm going to look down and right where it touches, I look left and I can see that I will lose four if the stock is 45 at expiration. Now, there are three key properties I want you to understand about profit and loss diagrams. The first one is, is that you will always get a bend here at the strike. Notice that we get this bend. It kind of looks like a hockey stick right here, right at 50. If I'm brand new to options, I might not be able to tell if it's a call or a put, but I can definitely tell we're dealing with a 50 strike. The second thing I can tell is that this is a bullish strategy. The trader wants the stock to rise. How can I tell that? Because the only way that we reach profits, in other words, getting above zero right here, is for the stock to climb in this direction. And the further it climbs, look what happens to our profits. So not only is it bullish, but it's unlimited bullish. The further that stock rises, the better it is for me with a long call. That's not true for all option strategies, but I can easily tell that it's true for this one. What happens if the stock price falls? Well, I start heading into losses down here. My maximum loss is four. Doesn't matter how low the stock price goes, that is the maximum loss. So I can quickly tell that this strategy, the long call, gives me limited risk to the downside, but gives me unlimited gains to the upside. But do you see how easy it is to figure that out by simply looking at a picture? 
Now, the third thing you can tell from our profit and loss diagram is where the break-even point is at expiration. And here it looks like our line crosses zero at 54. If the profit and loss is zero, it means you didn't make, you didn't lose, you broke even. For a call option, your expiration break-even is always found by taking the strike, in this case 50, plus the purchase price, in this example 4, and adding them together. And you get 54, and that's exactly where this line is crossing. Why is the break-even 54? Well, think about it. If the stock is 54 at expiration, the $50 call is worth $4 of intrinsic, we paid for, and we just broke even. So remember your three keys for any profit and loss diagram. A bend always occurs at the strike or strikes. Profits lie above zero, losses lie below. And finally, your break-even point or points is where the line crosses zero. Once you understand how to read profit and loss diagrams, strategies become much easier. This is what a $50 put purchased for $5 would look like. It still looks like a hockey stick, but it's moving in the opposite direction. So I can quickly tell that this is a bearish outlook. I need the stock price to move in this direction to get the graph above zero. So if you buy a put, you want to see this stock price fall. Notice because I have no limit up here on this end, I can make money all the way down to a stock price of zero. However, if the stock price rises above 50 at expiration, I have a fixed loss and in this case would be $5. What's my break even? For a put option, it's just the opposite. We're going to take our $50 strike minus the $5 purchase price in this case, that's going to give me 45, and that's exactly where this line crosses. And that's telling me that if the stock is 45, the $50 put would be worth $5 of intrinsic value. We paid five, and we just broke even. Now here's a strategy called a vertical spread specifically a bull vertical spread. And my goal is not to teach the strategy here, but just to show you how easy it is to understand strategies once you understand profit and loss diagrams. First thing you can tell is that we must have two strikes involved in this strategy because we have two bends. I have a $50 strike included and a 55. That's where my graph bends. I can also tell that this is bullish because I need the stock price to move in this direction in order to get me to gains. But if the stock price rises above 55, I max out. And it looks like to a maximum of three in this example. If the stock price falls below 50, I have a maximum loss of two. So vertical spread gives me limited losses and limited gains. I can see my break even point right here where the line crosses zero is at 52. But once again, even if you don't understand vertical spread, look how easy it is to understand the nature of the strategy just by reading a graph. Here's another strategy called a condor, and I can quickly tell that I have four strikes, one here at 45, one at 50, one at 55, and one at 60. This is one of many what are called neutral strategies in options trading. We want the stock price to stay relatively quiet. And it's easy to see here because the highest point of this graph, the highest profit, is right here between 50 and 55. So I don't really want the stock price to head out in this direction. That's going to push me into losses. I don't want the stock price to fall at least too far in this direction because that's going to push me into losses. I want the stock price ideally to stay between 50 and 55, that's my maximum gain, but I could afford to have it come down to my break-even points. And my break-even points are 46.50 on the left and 58.50 over here on the right. So as long as the stock is somewhere between 46.50 and 58.50, I will at least make something from this strategy. Here's a strategy called a straddle. And it's actually made up of a long call and a long put at the same strike. And that's why I only have one bend right here at 50. But because I have a call and a put, I can make money if the stock price rises out this way, and I can make money if the stock price falls out this way. Now that sounds like a good thing, but look what the graph is also telling you. You've got a very wide range here of potential losses. And chances are the stock price is more likely to stay somewhere here in the center than it is to make a very, very large move. So I can quickly see that in this example, my break even is on the left is down here at 40 and on the right is up here at 60. And that's because I paid $10 for this straddle, which is my maximum loss. But I do have unlimited gains out in this direction if the stock rises, and I have unlimited gains if the stock price falls in this direction. 
So once again, look how easy it is to understand the nature of a strategy just by looking at the graph. Now another benefit of understanding profit and loss diagrams is to make comparisons between strategies. So here's the profit and loss diagram for a long stock position. And you can see that it makes dollar for dollar if the stock price rises and it loses dollar for dollar if it falls. We have extreme outcomes. And in financial risk management, this is one of the first things we look for to avoid. Always try to avoid the extreme outcomes where you can make it all or lose it all. And take a look at what a call option does with this. When we compare it to long shares of stock, I can still make an unlimited gain, but I have pushed my break even point out forward a little bit. And that's in exchange for getting rid of all of this risk down here to the left. So there are trade offs. Here's a short stock position. We can make an unlimited amount down to a stock price of zero if it falls, but we have unlimited risk if it rises. When we compare it to a long put option, we can see the benefits. The put option can make an unlimited amount if the stock price falls all the way down to zero, but I do have to give up a little bit more with the break even because it's now shifted lower. Again, that's because of the time value or the extrinsic value. But in exchange for that, I get rid of all of this unlimited upside risk. The real benefit of options and understanding profit and loss diagrams gets into rolling, hedging, and morphing positions. So for example, here's what it means when we roll a position. Perhaps we start out with our long $50 call like this, but the stock moves in my favor. Rather than exiting the position and taking a few small pennies for the profits, I'm going to switch it or roll it to a higher strike. Maybe I'll sell my 50 call and buy the 55. And that will always produce a credit to the account, which now sits there safely in money market. And my profit and loss diagram has now moved from this yellow curve to this one in red. Notice that I have reduced the amount that I can lose. And in exchange, I had to give up a little bit more here to the upside in terms of break even. The stock moves some more. I can roll again. And maybe I'll move from the red to the green. The beautiful thing about this position is that notice on the green curve, I have rolled above zero. I can no longer lose. There's no more fear, and yet I still have unlimited gains. This is where the money is made, not in getting in and getting out, but staying in the positions, but managing that risk. What else could I do? If this is my current position right here, I've rolled to the 60 strike. I have no potential for losses down here. Maybe I could throw on a back spread and I could change from the green to the blue. I still have unlimited upside, just not as much. I don't have that same slope or same deltas, but I can also make more if the stock price falls. Morphing is another powerful tool that we have with options. And for example, maybe I can go from my current green curve here to a vertical spread in red. And yes, I've limited my upside, but I've also increased the amount that I could make. What if I didn't want to completely give up the upside here? Well, maybe I could do this. I haven't completely flattened it off, but I'm not as vertical as I was before, but I have put more cash into my pocket. These are different ways of rolling, managing risk, but staying in the position. I can also morph by changing directions. Morphing means I'm going to physically change the profit and loss diagram. So for example, if I start with my $55 call here in yellow, but now the stock price falls and I want to go bearish. What could I do? Well, maybe I could sell a $50 call against it. And I've now changed to this. I've changed to a bear vertical spread. That is a morph. But in order to understand that and to see the effects, you have to understand the profit and loss diagrams. As I mentioned at the beginning, there are two curves. There's the expiration curve that we're seeing here in yellow, but there's also what's called a current curve and it might look like this one here in red. And those are things that we save for the Alpha Trader Certificate course and show you how to read these and how they're going to move throughout time and as volatility changes as well. But you're gonna work them the same way. If the stock, let's say, is 55, you would just trace a line up to that current curve and look over, and it's going to tell you your profit and loss right now. Now, again, the good news is with profit and loss diagrams, we don't need to sketch these out by hand. Your broker's platform will show them to you. Here's what it looks like in the Options House platform, now purchased by E-Trade. But this is one Apple 
160 call purchased for $3.60. And if you add those two numbers together, we get a expiration break even of 163.60. That's what it's showing us right here. And down below is the expiration graph we've been talking about. And the skinny curve right here is the current curve. The vertical blue line here is the current stock price. Because the markets are open now, that blue line is live. If the stock price rises or falls, you will see that blue line move with the stock price. So it's very easy to figure out what's going to happen. So if I just bought this option and I want to know what's going to happen to me today, I need to be on this current curve right here. And I can say, for example, what if the stock gets, let's make it up here to 165 right there. I would be up about $341.21 today. But what happens at expiration at that same stock price? Well, drop down to your expiration graph. And you can see that I'd be up about $150.64. So your profitability just depends on whether you're talking about today or at expiration. But it's all very easy to figure out once you know how to read profit and loss diagrams. If you want to learn all the tools for mastering the art and science of options trading, check out the AlphaTrader course at OptionsAtoZ.com.